Good morning, Rachel. Um, most of the notices, as you know, are in the notice sheet or on the blog. I'd like to remind you that Eden, which is open to everybody, is um, 4 o'clock this afternoon. And of course, because it's near to All Saints Day, it's Festival of Lights, so it will be very interesting. I hope you'll come. I'd also like to remind you that next week is Remembrance Sunday. And so the service starts at 10.30. Stewards will probably be here at 10 o'clock, but you'll have to wait half an hour for the start of the service if you come from 10 o'clock. Now, um, Margaret has a letter. Morning. Good morning. Um, Tony uh, and I felt that uh, we needed to just bring this to everybody's attention, um, and that is um, for personal reasons. Um, two of our steward team are having to step back at the moment. Um, so therefore, uh, it's a very, very busy time of the year. We're going to be down to stewards. So um, we're asking for help. It would be on a Sunday, probably the second, well, that's the second steward, not probably, helping set up church and, and doing the usual task, both before and after church. Um, I mean, my, my hope and prayer out of this situation is that this might be an opportunity for somebody here who thinks, well, I'll have a go at that just for a little while. And you might <coughs> like, it, like it and take to it and hey, hey, you might come on board. But the main thing is, is that we do need some help. No getting away from it. So as we approach this season of our Saviour's birth, I would just like to ask this, that you all give some thought to this very, very needy um, request. <coughs> Thank you very much for your time. So it just remains for me to welcome Malcolm, who's going to be our preacher, and Martin, who's going to lead the service. Thank you. Saturday evening at Brixton Methodist Church is the Tear Fund Big Quiz. Last year we took a team and we won. I know, I mean, the prize was rubbish, but <laughs> the fact of winning was great. So if anybody would like to come along next Saturday, the host is rubbish, that's me, but don't say anything about that. But um, we look forward to seeing you if you can make it next Saturday evening. Good. Jesus tells us that the greatest commandment is to love the Lord our God with all our hearts, souls and minds. So, friends, let's just do that. Let's bring God our hearts and our emotional ups and downs. Let's invite him into our souls, which is the very depth of who we are. Let's honour him with our minds in all our thinking and our questions. And we sing. Number 28, Jesus calls us here to meet him as through word and song and prayer.
Heavenly Father, our journeys have brought us together in this moment, in this place, to share our love for you, for your word, and your truth. So side by side we worship you and ask that you would guide our way. Hear our prayers, increase our love, and teach us how to serve you in our community and world both generously and faithfully. In you we find our security and we will follow you. In you we find strength and we will proclaim you in words that we sing, say and think. In you we find faithfulness, companionship and truth. And we will rejoice, celebrate and serve you. For you are our God and we adore you. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We praise you, our living God, for the gift of love, for its words and silence, for its gentleness and strength, for its diversity and stability, for its power and vulnerability, for, its, for all its shades and all its expressions, for all the ways it enriches our lives through family, friends, and nature, and most of all, for the ways it connects us to you, who is perfect love, never changing, always eternal. God of our days and our decisions, when we take the easy option in life and turn away from the possibilities of change, forgive us and challenge us. When we turn away from those we could, who we, those we could stand by, forgive us and challenge us. When we allow bitterness to tarnish our spirits and darken our hearts, forgive us and challenge us. When we allow tragedy to define and not shape us, forgive us and challenge us, that we may grow in wisdom, grace and love. Thank you, steadfast God, for your forgiveness for your assurance that where we go, you go. Where we stay, you stay. Though we may turn our backs on you and begin to walk away, you are always there to embrace, to affirm, and to call us back in life and in death. All of these prayers we ask in and through the name of Jesus. Amen. Jessica. service today is about the greatest commandment. Um, love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbour as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. And um, easy, right? Simple. <laughs> I was pondering on this all week and I was thinking about, you know, Something I was thinking about was loving yourself. Sometimes that's quite hard, isn't it? You know, it says love your neighbour as you love yourself. But if you don't like yourself very much, it's not going to be very easy to love your neighbour. So how do we know what love is? How do we experience love? Um, if you can cast your minds back, if you came to mine and Michael's wedding in 2016, you would have heard this passage, which is one of my favourites, um, from 1 John 4. And it says, There is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear, because fear has to do with punishment. The one who fears is not made in perfect love. We love because he first loved us. So how do we follow this greatest commandment? We follow it by knowing that we are loved by God. So, I'm going to teach you a song. You don't have the lyrics, David, so don't panic. <laughs> I'm just going to teach it to you. Uh, I'm going to sing you a line and you're going to sing it back to me. Okay? Do you think we can do that? Yes. Oh, you're very confident. I like it. So it goes. Love, perfect love. Sing it to me. Love. Love in our hearts. 
their teachers leave this place to go and learn more of you. We pray that they will see so clearly in everything that happens in this place and beyond something of your great love for us. And that will encourage all of us to love you with every ounce of our beings. This we ask in the name of Jesus. Amen.
God's sovereignty from creation to eternity is dedicated to assisting those in deepest need and direst circumstances. Psalm 146. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, O my soul. I will praise the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praises to my God all my life long. Do not put your trust in princes, in mortals, in whom there is no help. When their breath departs, they return to the earth. On that very day their plans perish. Happy are those whose help is the God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord their God, who made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, who keeps faith forever, who executes justice for the oppressed, who gives food to the hungry. The Lord sets the prisoners free. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord watches over the strangers. He upholds the orphan and the widow. But the way of the wicked he brings to ruin. The Lord will reign forever, your God, O Zion, for all generations. Praise the Lord. that God doesn't want us just a part of us. He requires the whole thing, heart, soul, mind, and strength. Full tilt, all the times without faith. God must come first in everything we feel, think, and do. Mark 12, 28 to 34. One of the scribes came near and heard them disputing with one another, and seeing that he answered them well, he asked him, "Which commandment in the first uh, is the first of all?" Jesus answered, "The first is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord O God, the Lord is one." You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than this. Then the scribe said to him, you are right, teacher. You have truly said that. He is one, and besides him there is no other. And to love him with all the heart, and with all the understanding, and with all the strength, and to love one neighbor as oneself. This is much more important than whole burnt offering and sacrifice. When Jesus saw that, he answered wisely. He said, to him, you are not far from the kingdom of God. After that, no one dared to ask him any question.
A new commandment I give unto you, that you love one another, as I have loved you. Number 242. I could make out. 
And it was there that suddenly I realised what was missing. I needed to go back to where I'd started as a young boy in the church. And not a lot had changed in about 25 years. They were still singing the same hymns. They were still saying the same prayers. But it was comfortable. It was wonderful. And there was something different about the people from normal. Now, I'm telling you all this for the simple reason that come together started me off in a way. And there were people there who was very encouraging. And I suddenly realised what real love meant. It was about loving one another as well as loving God. And both our readings this morning celebrate that. It, Mark's Gospel is a wonderful Gospel. It was the first Gospel written. It was short, it was precise, but it gave a fundamental message. And that message was that the loving care of God and his people looked after one another through their love for God. They were told to love the stranger, the hungry, the orphans and the widows. In other words, God's love is for all. That was one of the things that they discovered. It wasn't just for me or you. It was for all people, good and perhaps not so good. For black or white or yellow or whatever, it was for all. And if only the world today could understand that and know it. And in Mark's Gospel, our reading this morning revolves around that love. It revolves around a question asked of Jesus by one of the teachers of the law, a scribe as they were called. And here he asked this question, of all the commandments, which is the most important? Jesus' answer was what we've already heard. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord with your, your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this. Love your neighbour as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. There were two things at play here. There were the scribes, the learned men of the law, the, the Pentateuch, as we sometimes know it, the first five books of the Old Testament. These men made a systematic study of the law of Moses. Its exposition, their professional occupation, was centred all around that. And then there was the Sadducees. They were a religious party that existed among the Jews of that day in Christ's day. They resisted the truth of God. They resisted the truth of the gospel. And we have plenty today in this world who are resisting that good news. The question that the scribe asked of God, of Jesus, was a question which was often debated in rabbinic schools. They had a tendency to interpret the law in all its many rules and regulations. Their trade was to know and apply the oral law. Now on the other hand, the Sadducees did not accept this oral law at all. Therefore the teacher of the law would no doubt have been very well satisfied when Jesus gave his answer. And also well satisfied with the discomfort of the Sadducees. In Judaism there was this tendency to expand the law in hundreds and thousands of rules and regulations. And I sometimes worry a bit about 
the conference of the Methodist Church every year seems to add more and more and more rules and regulations. Some of them impossible to actually see through. On the other hand, there was this tendency there to gather up this law in one sentence, a statement which would contain its own message. The new thing that Jesus did was to put these two commandments together. He took an old law and filled it with new meaning. No rabbi had ever done that before. As Christians, do we ever notice that God is always doing new things? New things. If we open our hearts to God, we will see God all around us. I was a bit worried that Jessica, earlier on, might give a, an illustration which was in, in the resources for this week. But she didn't. So I, I left it out. I wish I'd kept it. But it was a good way of describing what I'm getting at. The new thing that Jesus did was to put these two commandments together. A good example of today, how God works, is this one. A star American footballer went to speak to 300 inmates in the Everglade Correctional Facility in Miami sharing with them some words from Isaiah 43. There was one verse, 90, it says, Forget the former things, do not dwell on the past. See, I am doing a new thing. Do you not perceive it? Now it springs up. I am making a way in the desert, streams, in the wasteland. In this special time, God showed up behind prison bars. An observer said that the chapel began to erupt. Men were weeping together. And in the end, 27 men gave their lives to Christ. Many may poo-poo that today. But that is how God works. That day in the Everglade Correctional Facility, love sprang up behind prison bars. God was doing new things. One of the lessons for today is that we should never ever underestimate the power of God and what he can do. In a way, we're all in prison. Our society today is weighed down. Prisons of our own making, trapped behind bars of greed, selfishness, addiction. And amazingly, even in a society and a world like that, God will show up. He'll show up in you. He'll show up in me. He'll show up in all of God's people who truly have given their heart and their lives to God. Jesus then was teaching a new thing. The scribes, to the scribes, and they were doing this new thing. Jesus was actually, I think this word has been mentioned this morning, connecting them to God. Those who were there listening to what Jesus had to say, who perhaps some of them were trying to catch him out, they realised that those words were true. He was teaching that God in his very being is love. It lies at the very heart of Christianity. In fact, it's the only religion that presents that God not only loves, he is love. He is love. How do we know that? Because he showed it in the life and death 
and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. That's how we know it. A love like that. Very rarely, Paul said in the letter to the Romans, very rarely will a good man give his life for all. Perhaps sometimes one may do it, he said. But while we were yet sinners, Christ died for the ungodly. Religion to Jesus was loving God then and loving one another. It lies at the heart of what we are and what we should be. Yes, we sometimes fall short, but God is still there. And God is always available. We only have to go to him. And he accepts us. And all this, what Jesus said, the expert in the law willingly accepted it. He accepted it. Why? Because deep in his heart he knew that what Jesus was saying was right and true. He said, it's better than all the sacrifices. Of course, the Jewish their faith was still sacrificing at the Lamb. Jesus was the Lamb, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of all the world. Jesus shows us what real love looks like, and he asks us, how far down the road to the kingdom of God are we? He said to the expert of the law, you are not far. You are not far from the kingdom of God. <coughs> How far down that road are we today? The problem for all of us is that sometimes it's always easy to let ritual take the place of love. Perhaps the Methodist Church needs to learn that again when it's passing all its rules and its regulations. We need to be set free. We need to be set free from all that binds us away from the love of God. It's always easy then to let that take the place of our worship. Sometimes it becomes a matter of the church building instead of a matter of the whole life. Sometimes it becomes something else or something else, and so we go on. God is calling us each day to love him, to love him with all our hearts and with all our strength and all our minds. And it's in him that we will learn to love one another. Let me finish with another story. A true story. It's from the 19th century Edinburgh. A man called John Gray became a policeman. And he was always accompanied by his faithful dog, Bobby. When John died, Bobby kept a vigil at John's graveside, refusing even to leave it. Only for a lunchtime meal. Bobby would then return back to the graveside. Nothing else would make him leave the churchyard. And so they built a shelter for him. And he remained there until his own death, 14 years later. Bobby is also buried in that churchyard. And his headstone reads, Greyfriars Bob Bobby died the 14th of January 1872 aged 16 years and there's an inscription on the stone let his love and loyalty and his devotion be an example and a lesson to us all I'm going to say a prayer again which has already been said by Martin. Let us pray. We praise you, living God. 
for the gift of love. For its words and silence, for its diversity and stability, for its power and vulnerability, for all its shades and all its expressions, for all the ways it enriches our lives through family, friends and nature. And most of all, for the way it connects us to you, who is perfect love, never changing and eternal. Amen. Let these words from Mark's Gospel be in our heart this week. In Jesus' name. Amen. <coughs> future is the funding of the two lunch clubs. Up to this year we have received a grant from the City Council which has enabled us to hire the two halls needed 50 weeks of the year. Due to the Council's ongoing financial problems this year we will receive half the grant but from next April we are on our own and must raise almost two and a half thousand pounds and that is before we consider our other activities and subsidising transport for the less able. Wollaston Care Group has not held a coffee morning at Grangewood for many years, but we are here on the 16th of November and hope you will support us. Every ticket purchased will help us, as loss of the lunch clubs would affect some members of our congregation, either as helper or user of the service as well as those from the wider community. Thank you, Dory. Dory, <coughs> thank you for what you do in that group yourself. Thank you. um, I would like to ask for prayers for the family of Omari Thomas. And Omari was 17 years old. He was killed in a bike accident in Chilwell last week, and although I don't know his family personally, I do have friends who do, and I know they're absolutely devastated. Joan, thank you. I'd like to um, say thank you um, for the prayers um, that some people have been offering for um, Lizzie and her situation, and I'm pleased to report that she is moving to Bramcourt, Chapel Street, Little Miner's Cottage, next week. Wonderful. Thank you, Jill. I'd like to ask prayers for the people of Valencia. I just cannot believe what they're going through when you see the devastation of that place. Many, many years ago, I went to Frasius in southern France. And three weeks after I was there, that was devastated and so might by a dam being broken. In a way, we may not learn anything, but the devastation is just unreal. 
the Nevada Umrati, when I find the words are very poor servants to describe, I think, how we all feel about what we've seen this morning. Margaret? Sorry. I just want to thank God for the kindness of strangers. Ever since I've had my big white steak, any time I walk around to the shops, if I stop or I look hesitant, somebody says, are you all right there? Do you want any help? And it is such a blessing. Brenda, thank you. I think you're one of those many people I know who exudes the love of God. Bless you. Thank you. I'd just like to ask for prayers for people uh, who we know in this congregation and beyond who are waiting for hospital appointments, for operations, waiting for test results. It's a long time to be waiting and, and I know people really are in need of, of our prayer for peace of mind and, and to trust in God at this time of waiting. I'd just like everyone to pray and think about the Christmas tree festival in a few weeks. It's only four weeks off. Um, if you're not able to help on the day, please come and support it. There's a lot of work going on behind the scenes. So thank you. Thank you, Sue. I'll just mention the little display we've put up today as well for people to look at and to give you ideas for donations as well. And that would be brilliant. Um, some of you will know I, I have family who um, have escaped from Myanmar. Um, I received a, a text this uh, this week to say that um, one of Elijah's cousins, uh, Elijah's married to my niece, <laughs> um, is founding a church in Thailand for the people who have escaped. And there was a video of the building going up. They left by a mole in nothing. And the response is to found the church. And again, Paul, we can't begin to understand what it's like for those people who you know. One thing, if I may, this Thursday is quite an important evening because at Kingswood Methodist Church, they're having a public meeting. There's one thing on the agenda. The future of Kingswood Methodist Church. If you can go, I'm sure that the people there <coughs> and the neighbourhood of the community will appreciate that very much. I don't know if a decision will be made, but certainly um, thoughts will be shared and discussed. Thank you. saints, we ask that we might be a holy church, a praying church, a giving church, a serving church. May the saints in heaven be an example for us as today, being ever mindful of our church's mission in this place and beyond. God of peace, we thank you for your world. And remember that you entrusted it to our care as stewards. <coughs> Give us wisdom to manage our money and personal finances well. And to practice heartfelt generosity. As we live each day, help us to treat our world fairly. Whilst accepting its goodness gratefully. Help us to remember that you are the giver of all we have and to put aside pride of ownership. God of compassion, bring healing and peace to the nations in conflict, where there is political instability, praying in particular, of course, for the Ukraine, Israel, Gaza, and Iran. Protect those who are poor and hungry, and give them hope. Move those with plenty to share with those who have little. 
and help all people to love their neighbours as themselves. We pray today for America as it enters into the final days leading up to this Tuesday when it will vote for the 47th President and Vice President of the 50 states that make up the United States of America. Our prayer is simple. We pray for peace, justice and understanding. And we pray for Valencia in Spain and all those so deeply affected by the deadliest of the flooding this week and its aftermath. We pray for comfort and strength in the face of this dreadful tragedy. God of justice, keep us from being preoccupied with money and worldly goods, and we're trying to increase them at the expense of justice. Let us not be so concerned with our problems that we become lacking in concern for the problems of others. Help us to demonstrate our love for you in our daily lives and in our wider society. Make us quick to forgive, slow to condemn and help us to strive for peace in our families, in our country and in the world. God of communities, we thank you for those who helped us on our journey of faith and encouraged us to keep going when we felt like giving up. For all those who taught us about faith and to have faith. For those who made the ultimate sacrifice of their lives, striving for a better world, following the example of your only son, Jesus. We pray for our own community here and for our church, its congregation and for all those who work tirelessly behind the scenes to make our church the thriving congregation it is today. And we pray for those names that we have shared this morning and the situations. We pray in particular for the Woolerton Care Group. And we pray, as Joan has mentioned this morning, about the young lady who was killed in a bike accident. Jill has given thanks and we join her in that, giving thanks for Lizzie and her situation. And Brenda wishes to thank God for the kindness and love of strangers and we join her in that. Pray for people with hospital appointments, those who are waiting results of um, tests, those who are waiting to go in those who are actually in at the moment. We pray for all of them. And yes, we pray for our Christmas tree festival, that it will be one of great joy and a means to show this area everything that this place means to us, that we show in this Christmas tree festival. And we think of Paul's families in Myanmar. And we pray for this Thursday the Kingswood Methodist Church, as it considers its future. And we remember all those names on our prayer board out in the foyer and the ongoing, compassionate, wonderful work of our prayer group that meets every Thursday evening. God of healing, we pray for all who bear the burdens of pain, bereavement, anxiety and depression. We pray for those whose illness stems from financial problems. We pray that they may have an awareness of your presence and an understanding that you are bearing their burdens with them and always working towards their healing and wholeness. God of eternity, we thank you for all the saints and praise you for their example and rejoice that they now live with you in heaven enjoying your everlasting peace. Lord, when we have sung our final hymn and shared in fellowship over coffee, as we leave this church, we give thanks for the love that you show <coughs> to the world through all your saints. May we, week by week, continue to celebrate with them whenever and wherever we worship. Merciful God, please accept all of our prayers that we offer to you in and through the name of Jesus, who taught us when we pray to say, 
our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Amen. <coughs> and we sing our last hymn. O Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder <coughs> consider all the works thy hand hath made, I see the stars, I hear the mighty thunder, the power throughout the universe displays that encourages us to show our love for him in everything that we do, say, <coughs> think and are. <laughs>